Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 86. Welcome. Thanks for listening. Today's blog is um, not one I, I really thought was going to hit. Like, you know, I have some that are like, yeah, this is important. And then I have others that are like, well, I don't, I just, let me just turn this out. You know, I write stuff and then I think, Meh, and it's kind of sits around on my computer for a while until there's a kind of lull in, in the going out process. And by going out process, I just mean the like, um, sharing, I guess. Yeah. Publishing on the, on the platform and such. Anyway, this one is not one of the ones that I was like, oh, let me, let me get this one whipped into shape so I can make sure I get it out there as soon as possible. This one has been sitting in the hopper for a little bit. Um, but it's funny, you know, when I auto post, it just kind of auto posts to a couple of different platforms when I post on the blog. And uh, over the weekend, I got quite a few views, which is actually really unusual for a weekend. <laughs> so I, gu I guess this, you know, you just never know. You really, really don't know. Um, yeah. So, um, well, I'm going to just get right into it. It is called How to Not Be a Creep. While grabbing a quick lunch, I sat at a counter by the window. I was in the middle of having a lovely, peaceful eating experience when a man sat two stools down the counter from me. This was not a problem. Here in New York City, I have zero difficulty ignoring strangers nearby. However, this guy made my creep detector go berserk. My nervous system started sounding the alarm. Creep alert, creep alert, danger, danger. And probably this guy was not a serial killer or a rapist. Probably he was just some guy eating his lunch before going back to work, but his creepiness rating was through the roof and therefore made my formerly pleasant lunch an exercise in survival. I really didn't need that shot of adrenaline with my meal. And assuming this guy wasn't actually a rapist, it occurred to me that maybe he'd like to know how not to trigger creep alerts in every woman he encounters. In this guy's case, it was about how he was sitting. Instead of facing the counter and the wall, his entire body was turned out toward me. It was, in effect, a full body stare. And maybe he wasn't actually creepily staring at me for 10 minutes straight. Maybe he was staring out the window behind me, but generally, only a creep has no sense of the lack of propriety about staring at fellow human beings. A creep stands too close to you. A creep keeps talking to you after you've sent an I don't want to talk signal. A creep will miss pretty much every single I don't want to talk signal. He'll talk to you even while you're wearing headphones. And those are just the obvious creep behaviors. The ones that set off alarms are often the sort that I experienced at the lunch counter a placement of the body that suggests a lack of respect for others' personal space. If you're worried you might be a creep, you're probably not one, as creeps don't have that much self-awareness generally. But it is possible that some non-creeps might be exhibiting some unconscious creep body language. So, to prevent creepitude, I'd recommend learning some body awareness and spatial awareness. I don't know where you get this outside of theater training. In many of the physical theater forms that make up my practice, we work on this sort of thing. But surely there are other ways to start to become aware of other bodies, other people in space. Dance classes might be good. Certainly getting a sense of one's own body would be helpful through something like the Feldenkrais method or the Alexander technique. I think this would be the first step in learning how to not be a creep. Just learning how to negotiate your own body in space. Once you know how to not radiate creepiness with your body, you will likely get better at adjusting creepy language. I'd suggest following Katie Katie Kate or Catelyn Moran or Lindy West or Roxane Gay or any other feminist writers. Paying attention to words they use can help you through tricky language waters. 
Or you can ask your non-creepy friends. Try the ones with lots of female friends. They've probably got a good handle on how to talk respectfully to women. Or listen to that India Ari song from 2002. That one that's called Talk to Her? Or When You Talk to Her? Something like that. If you are actually a creep, well, please don't pay attention to any of this stuff. It is actually pretty helpful to have signals flying off you that help us know to avoid you. But for anyone who's just not sure, help is out there. You don't have to seem like a creep if you're not one. Probably every woman has a creep detector. I, I hope every woman has a creep detector. Uh, we, we probably learn this skill pretty early on, as there are a fair amount of creeps out there as the world is starting to discover. It's funny though, because like, right? We all knew this, ladies, but apparently uh, quite a few gentlemen are just starting to realize what we've been dealing with since we were children. Um, so welcome to the party, guys. It's good times. Um, but if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not a creep. So thank you, non-creepy dudes. Ladies are generally not creeps. That's just one of the things, one of the perks. It's when we don't have to worry about being creepy. Hooray! Things to be ex happy about. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um... I don't think I've recommended a podcast in a little while. Oh, I did last time. Uh, but yeah, I think I have probably recommended so many podcasts. Yeah, this is like my 86th episode. I had I didn't start recommending podcasts maybe till halfway through. But still, that's a lot of podcasts. Um, and I don't think I've recommended every single one. But I think I can't recommend a podcast every time. But I'm going to try try to, if it connects to what I'm talking about, I will absolutely recommend a podcast. Uh, I don't know any podcasts about creeps or how not to be creeps. There is no cre creepy podcast that I know. So, um, but tell me if there is a, a podcast about recognizing creeps or something. That'd be, that'd be uh, useful information. I can add it to notes on the podcast or on the blog or I don't know. Uh, so, no podcast, but uh, there is a song, and <laughs> here's, the th here's the thing. Uh, the obvious choice uh, would be Creep by Radiohead, but it's not actually thematically quite on. The title is correct. Um, it would be kind of an on-the-nose choice, and I don't want to do it, partly because, like, I'm just not feeling it, and also... Um, my dear friend Alexandra Scott has done a recording of, of Creep that I, I love. And um, I just feel like I, she's already done it. I don't need to. I don't, uh, don't, don't have a desire. So no Creep. If one day you want me to sing Creep for you in person, we'll talk about it. But <laughs> as of now, no Creep. Um, the other obvious choice would have been Don't Stand So Close to Me, which is right perfect but I've already done don't stand so close to me on the podcast so that's uh that's out so what's interesting is sort of trying to find the right song for this sent me on a really crazy investigation and I realized that there really aren't very many songs that speak to this um, experience which is really crazy because every woman I know has had to negotiate with creeps <laughs> and to repel them in whatever way possible, send them away, try and placate them, whatever. Like we, we all of us have experience with creeps and yet there's no real music. Like there's not songs. I mean, I'm sure someone somewhere has a, has songs, but I, I, I really, I looked, I, I searched, you know, songs that tell someone to back off, songs to tell someone to go away. And, you know, most of them are like breakup songs, which is not what I was after. So, um, 
Yeah. So there's a real, I'm going to say like a hole in, in popular music that just does not speak to a really fundamental experience <laughs> um, for a lot of women, which, uh, so maybe it's time to, to, to do a little change in. <laughs> and maybe I just need to write a whole album's worth of songs that tell creeps to go away. That's, I'm going to put that on my list of things to do. Um, but in that, in my search, I did discover the one song that kind of does it kind of, um, not, con- not entirely. Um, and yeah, so the song is, is called No by Megan Trainer, and I just, I feel like I maybe danced to it at a wedding or something, but otherwise I'd never really paid attention to or knew the song before, um, but I've learned it for the podcast, so you're going to get my version of Megan Trainer's No, which I've only just learned in the last couple of days, um, but it's also interesting because uh, what I, I read a little bit about the song, and there's like a, apparently she wrote this song, I think with somebody, I can't remember who, and then they went back and added this kind of intro, and I'm not going to sing the intro, because the intro, they were like, oh, and then we were like, oh, everything's good, because we added this intro, and the intro kind of softens the song a little bit, This the intro kind of makes it seem like... It's just like a boy. He's like a harmless kid who's trying to talk to her. And then the whole song after that is a little bit softer because of it. Um, And there's a way where it's kind of almost like because of that setup, it makes it uh, like as if the, the, the guy approaching her is just a sweet kid who doesn't know any better and she's telling him to go away because you're not man enough, which is not actually usually, I, at least, I don't know, it's certainly not my experience. Like, I'm not usually telling some sweet, cute kid to back off. Like, it's usually some grown-ass man who should know better, who really needs to get his shit together and get away from me <laughs> and probably every woman I know. Um, anyway, so I, I decided not to sing that intro, although I will play it. Um, so just, a, I don't know, a little inside, inside uh, exploration of, of No by Megan Trainer. Um, so, you know, listen to her version if you, if you want to hear that intro. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, here's me messing around with No. Take this personal 
blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, nah, to the ah, to the no, no, no. All you ladies, listen up. If that boy ain't giving up, make your lips and swing your hips, girl. All you got to say is, my name is no, my sign is no, my number is no. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. Not nah, to the ah, to the no, no, no. My name is no. My sign is no. My number is no. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. Not nah, to the ah, to the no, no, no. Untouchable, 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 not to the eye, uh, to the oh no no. Untouchable, 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 not to the eye, uh, to the oh no no. Eyes, listen up, if that boy ain't giving up, make your lips and swing your hips, girl. All you got to say is my name is no my sign is no my number is no you need to let it go you need to let it go you need to let it go not to the ah uh, to the oh no no my name is no my sign is no my number is no you need to let it go you need to let it go you need to let it go not to the ah uh, to the ah uh, to the ah uh, to the ah no untouchable 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 Untouchable, untouchable, not to the ah, uh, to the no, no, no.